Um, I realise that there's two talks tonight, and that's actually stopping you all from having uh, more beer and social time. So I'm going to make mine very, 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 very fast. My talk is called Application Code Isn't the Only Code That Can Have APIs. My name is Paul Stack. You can find me on the internet at Stack72. It's very strange for me giving a talk at a meetup where my boss is there, my boss's boss is there, and my boss's boss's boss is there, because usually I drink and I swear. So I will try my best to be as coherent and uh, non uh, and as politically correct as I can tonight. If, if I'm not, I apologize in advance, and I'm sure we will cut it from a talk. So uh, this talk is completely code. This is the only slide I have. The code will be available uh, on GitHub and uh, you can go and you can download it and you can see different things. So I have two sections of code today. Um, firstly, I'm gonna show that the fact that with Pulumi, because it's a real programming language, that we can actually create layers of abstraction. Uh, because we can create layers of abstraction, it feels like we can create sane APIs that people can actually take advantage of. This is not a level 100 talk. I apologize if you're new to Pulumi, but the, the code that I'm showing should be very straightforward because of the fact that we, we use quite sane APIs and uh, across the different types of cloud. It's gonna be very specific to AWS tonight, and we are going to take advantage of two different things. Firstly, we're gonna take advantage of the very um, good Crosswalk, uh, Amazon Crosswalk API library that has been created and has been uh, launched publicly within the last uh, month and uh, people can take advantage of. And secondly, we're gonna show that you don't just need to use those APIs. If the APIs don't exist, you can actually write your own and you can actually start to create some layers of abstraction so that your own users can take advantage of things. So I have a few things going on here right now. Uh, firstly, just to show you, I have deployed this stack because it takes about 10 to 15 minutes and I have like 20 minutes to give this talk. So it's better that you don't look at my screen and watch it say and pull me creating for the next 10 minutes because then everyone will be falling asleep so you can see it does a lot of different things it has a database it has some vpc some subnets some write tables and some im role policy attachments so we'll go back to the code and we'll have a look at what it does so firstly we have um it was an x like crosswalk api package and the crosswalk api package we can pass a name to we can pass a cider block and we can pass a number of subnets and tags to this is very simple and very easy, and it's not the crux of the talk. This is very much publicly available. You can download this and you can use it today, and it's a lot of what I'm talking about on, on this crosswalk stuff is available on the Plumy blog. The second thing is, is um, RDS. So firstly, when we deploy this, it actually brings up um, some, it, it will go off and it will find the number of availability zones available for the VPC, because it'll go off and uh, make a call to Amazon. And then for each availability zone, it'll deploy a number of NAT gateways or a, a NAT gateway per availability zone, and it will deploy a public subnet per availability zone. So if I go back to my Pulumi up, we can see it's got a public zero, public one, public two, public three, public four, public five, and public six. So we can actually see it has six subnets that it's deployed. And if we go and inspect them in Amazon, we can see that each of the subnets has a slash 20 cider block. So I started thinking about what other ways of abstraction can we actually create um, across the top of AWS. And I'm a very opinionated person. And I'm laughing as I say that because the more beer I have, the more opinionated I get. So I've been deploying stuff in Amazon for quite a few years. And um, I, 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 I kind of have my own way of doing a lot of different things. So we declare an RDS instance, and we'll look inside the code of this in a second, okay? We pass in a description, we pass in some tags, because I actually want everything to have like a, a base tag. So if you think of uh, tags like cost center or department or uh, which team or stuff like that, so you can actually set this as a base tag and pass those tags around everywhere. That way all of your resources will be um, available to, to have those tags. And that'll be useful later when, uh, when you start looking at things like policy as code and, uh, and different pieces like this. Then we, we pass in a number of subnets. Uh, the subnets we actually pass in here are the public subnet IDs that come out of the VPC. You'll notice in a production environment, I would not just deploy everything into public subnets, but I'm being crazy lazy and I'm going to just deploy everything right now and have it available across all of my public subnets. We pass in a username and password which we will pass in secrets for, just because 
good practice. We don't really want to keep that stuff uh, available and, and in play text anywhere. We'll pass in allocated storage an engine version. This is very much a hard coded um, engine to uh, Postgres and I should have called it actually a Postgres DB instance. We'll pass in an instance class and uh, as you can see in Pulumi we have abstracted uh, away the instance type so that people don't actually need to know what the instance type um, identifier is. What you actually do is you just go instance types and in your IntelliSense you can see all the different instance types that are available. So we can actually see what, what they are. In this case, I'm going for an R3 large just because I like those types. We have a storage of GP2, which is basically an SSD. And we pass in a final snapshot identifier because when we destroy our database, we want to take a final snapshot. It's just good practice. And I have, we're going to come back and talk about this. Send enhanced logs to CloudWatch. Because this is a very interesting piece. This is where we can start to really abstract away different um, actions that happen inside our engine. So if we go inside the RDS class, we can see firstly that we extend our component resource. So this is just a, an internal construct in Pulumi where um, we can actually start to create our own class across the top of things. We have uh, some outputs, we'll come back to the outputs, and then we have a constructor. So our constructor takes a name because of how we look at it where we have a name and we take in some arguments. The arguments in this case will be RDS args, which we'll look at the interface in a second. And we can start to do different things. So the first thing that we need to do when we create an RDS instance is we need to create a subnet group. The subnet group will take the subnet IDs and any tags that we want. And again, as you can see, because I'm passing the base tags in, we automatically take all of the base tags that we needed as well as any extra tags on top. So in this case, we tag it with the subnet group name and so on and so forth. And then we append it to our parent. So the next thing we do is we, we create an RDS instance. Now this has got a lot of different things going on in here. So firstly, I'm going to look at, at the real um, uh, meat of it. So we pass allocated storage and the subnet group. Now notice that the subnet group is actually this subnet group that's, that's, uh, that's actually being created in situ. It's not one that's been created outside. So users don't need to care. They don't actually need to understand about subnet groups. They don't need to understand what subnet groups are, what they're needed to do, et cetera. They pass in a number of subnet IDs and we will create the subnet groups for them on our behalf. Then we're saying, as I said, the engine is hard coded to Postgres, uh, just because I'm not a MySQL fan. We pass in, in uh, engine version and instance class. And then we can start to take advantage of how our language looks. So if we pass in IOPS, we will set IOPS. Otherwise, we set it to zero. And if IOPS is zero, then Amazon will ignore that just because of the fact that um, it, it, zero is like uh, the default value for a number in the same way as an empty string is the default value for a string. And Amazon realizes that it's not something that needs to be set. We will set a um, backup retention window. And if we don't set that, we'll set a default of seven. The same for backup window, the same for maintenance window. And then we'll come back again to this monitor and interval in a second. Then we can pass in the username and password, any names, et cetera, et cetera. So now we can start to take advantage of um, working out the layers of abstraction across the top. So I passed in this if args uh, send and enhance logs to CloudWatch. Now, if you want to send enhanced logs to CloudWatch in Amazon, it's kind of a pain in the ass because not only do you need to switch it on, but you also need to create a, an IAM role. You need to attach a, a policy to that IAM role. And for people to understand exactly what that's doing uh, and create all of those roles would be extremely painful. So because we're in a, a programming language and I pass in a bool right here where I say send enhanced logs to CloudWatch true, I can actually say if it is true, then what we're going to do is we're going to create a role. The role will have the correct assume, policy, uh, assume role policy, which will be monitoring the RDS using AWS.com, and it will have the correct tags. As well as that, we can attach a specific policy, which is a well-known and well-defined policy, uh, which points to the Amazon RDS enhanced monitoring role policy. So once that is created, because it creates it first, it needs to understand it, um, we can then say further down, the monitoring role ARM, if it is defined above, then pass it in. Otherwise, it's an empty string. So we've hidden away two, three levels of um, different resources here. Firstly, we've, we've hidden away the, the IAM role. Then we've hidden away the IAM policy, uh, role policy attachment. 
And then we've hidden away the subnet group. So users don't need to care about that. And it's a very simple API across the top. Now, we could take this a little further. I have created another um, parameter called number of read replicas. Read replicas, I'm going to, this is where I get a little bit more opinionated. Read replicas in Amazon are terrible, uh, especially if you're on the non-Aurora-based uh, setup because there's only specific parameters that you can pass in. And if you pass in the wrong parameters, every time you try and do a refresh, it will actually try and destroy your read replica and it will bring a new replica up in its place. So what I actually tried to do is, now this is by no means the best TypeScript. Um, and I'm sure that you're, you're sitting in a room with people who are like TypeScript experts and they will be able to give you much nicer code than this. But it's a very simple way of saying is that, if there is a number of read replicas, set it to number of replicas, otherwise set it to zero. And because again, we're in a program language, we can actually loop over and say, for every one in the number of replicas, let's create a new RDS instance of an instance class type, skip the final snapshot, you can't take a final snapshot of a um, RDS instance. And then we can actually say that the replicate source DB is our main database that we created and we can pass it in and pass it in the specific tag that go for it. Now, if I go back to my uh, Pulumi screen, I can say uh, Pulumi preview, and there should be zero changes because everything is deployed as expected. If you just give this a second. It's, it's trying, I promise. So we can see we have 40 unchanged. And if I go back to my code, and where I actually um, have defined the interface, if I say number of read replicas, and if I say three, and I got, if I go back to pull me up, it should tell me that it's actually gonna create three new databases, and it will give me the databases read replicas zero, one, and two. Let's give it a second again. And there we go. We can see, actually see that just by passing in a specific parameter for a read replicas, that you can start to take advantage of it. So by doing this, you can, if you have like an operations team who are, are very tightly controlling like your infrastructure and trying to like define a, a correct way that people can create their, their specific infrastructure across the top of it, then they can actually give you these classes that they can use as like node modules or uh, Py, uh, Python modules or, or, or so on, and you can actually write code against these, which means that they can control um, the different APIs that people do, they can control the different resources that are required for it, and not only that, they can actually can start to control the different tags that people actually have on top. And by using these types of APIs, you can actually start to do different things based, um, based on the top of it. Make sense so far? Is everyone with me, or is everyone just eating pizza? By the way, I can see your faces, so please at least nod. We're with you. <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> really, no one cares. Awesome. So um, the reason I started doing this is because um, we, we have a fantastic story around um, uh, VPCs and API Gateway and Elastic Load Balancing in uh, Crosswalk. And, um, DB instances are sort of a, a forgotten art within Amazon just because a lot more people are starting to use Aurora based on the top of them. And I've been deploying DB instances with read replicas for like things like Postgres and MySQL for about five or six years. And I know the ins and outs of why, why people would require APIs across the top. And if we start, to, we can actually start to extend this and we can basically pass in new types. So if I turn around and I can say DB prime, excuse me, DB option group name. And if I say input, use my type in, put string, sorry. And then further down, I can start to take advantage and I can say um, option group name. And I can say args dot, db option group name, otherwise uh, empty string. And then we can actually start to build our own db option group. So actually, what have I just done here? Oh, it's already there, I apologize. Um, so if we pass in 
I'm just going to take that out a second, sorry. Um, we can actually pass in whether we want to create custom. This is what I want to do. Create custom DB option group. And I can make it nullable and put Boolean. And then we can actually say further down, if args.create custom db auction group, and I can say uh, this dot auction group equals new AWS RDS auction group. And I can say my custom auction group. And I can really start to like build up a, a proper API across the top. And then anyone can say create custom option group is true. And I can say custom option group name is whatever. And we can start to like chain different uh, pieces of the puzzle together. So by doing this, it allows us to keep away all the layers of abstraction and keep away all the different resources that people don't need, need to care about because especially when it comes to things like IAM roles and option groups and uh, security group IDs and things like that, it becomes really painful and it becomes quite um, arduous in what you're actually doing. With. So by taking this a little further, not only will this work for um, our RDS instances, but we can then actually start to turn around and we can say, create a custom DNS record, true. And I'm gonna create a new way of doing that right now. Create custom, custom DNS record. And what I can do here is I can basically say, if args.create custom, custom DNS record, and I can start to say DNS equals new AWS root 53 record. And here, so now we've come into something that can be a little painful in Pulumi. So Pulumi has this idea by default of auto naming and a lot of people get caught out by because when you when you call something by name in aws uh, as a record it will actually append a suffix on the end and it, it can be a real uh, problem that that's the case so here we're just going to overwrite it and say my record and we can then start because we have a full um programming language we can start to get intellisense based over what the different pieces are and we can start to say type equals uh, AWS dot root 53 dot record, oh, excuse me, I apologize, record types dot C name. And we have like full strong typing of everything that we do. And we can actually start to see here is name and type is not assignable. Uh, property zone ID is missing. So we need zone ID and then we can just pretend that we've passed in a zone ID and then we actually have a, 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 a a DNS record that goes for it, and um, it'll it'll work through all the different pieces of it. Because we can do this, we can. Nobody cares about like you can actually say uh, custom DNS name, which will be in a, like a string that we pass in, and then they can say instead of like my record, you can say args dot custom DNS name, and you can start to really keep a lot of different things away from from all the users. So it's it's a, like a 20 minute whirlwind of, of the different pieces that you could do in order to make this a little easier um, to hide away the fact that this is a programming language and because it is a programming language, sometimes people are a little put off by it. They're a little scared because, especially in the operations world, you know, they have to learn not just the cloud, not just like um, how the cloud works, but also they have to learn a new programming language. So by abstracting a lot of that away, it actually makes it a little easier for them. Does anybody have any questions? Whatever you want, it doesn't need to matter. Like where I live, what I do, I don't mind. I have maybe a question. So why do you have a instance memorable, but you don't have a 
Yeah. I'm, I'm really sorry. Um, can, can somebody who's closer to the mic relay the question just because it's, it's a little far away? So you have instance type. So you have an instance type. Yeah. That you can IntelliSense. But you, you can't IntelliSense the ES volume type. Okay, so you have an instance type that you can IntelliSense, but you can't IntelliSense the EPS, EPS, yeah. EBS G volume G type. G to, uh, to, the the EBS volume type. Any, any questions about uh, the EUMs uh, that we have available for some of these things, like the C name and like some other things, but like, yeah, some places where the magic is crazy to market. Oh, okay, like the magic, like like the one that I have highlighted right here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, wait, wait, yeah. Wait. So, so, so this is like syntactical sugar that's that started to be created in the past. I'm I'm looking around the room. Maybe the last sort of two months, three months, where we started. Um, adding a lot more syntactical sugar to make things a little more uh, usable. Um, storage type is not one that's being created right now. It's very simple to be created. It's just um, <laughs> t t time is an issue because we have quite a small development team. But it's it's certainly you know uh, things like engine types, things like uh, uh, storage types, uh, not engine version because they change quite a lot. You know, th things that we know that we can control, we, we will certainly over time start to add a lot more syntax to the sugar on those to make them a little, a little easier because it's, it's very easy to understand like RDS instance types, but it's not very easy to understand RDS storage types. So we, we can definitely add that for you. There's no problem. Anything else? No, it's super helpful to have the EUMs just to get that intel sense here to draw and see what exactly is there. So I think that, that's part of why Paul is so excited about increasing our coverage of those, but it's also and like part of the reason why I added these as well is because I'm very lazy. Um, I don't want to have to remember a lot of the magic strings. So um, by, by giving myself the IntelliSense, I can really start to um, understand the different things that are available. The only trouble with magic strings like this is um, making sure that you keep up to date with Amazon. So, you know, we, we need to find better ways to like uh, pull this information from Amazon just because of the fact that uh, it changes quite a lot, especially when it comes to instance types. Things like storage types and uh, engine types don't change as much. But when you have um, definitely around um, instance types, it changes a lot and can differ from region to region, which can be a real pain. Uh, maybe maybe a, a blog post on this to show people um, how to create uh, this, uh, this syntactical sugar so that the, if they really need to, they can um, send pull requests would actually be quite useful here. I do love blog posts. I, I, I wasn't volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> Too late, wrote it down. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to bed. Um, it's 5.30 yeah. in the morning for me. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of your evening, uh, folks, and uh, I hope to um, meet you all next time at the meetup. Thanks so much. Thank you.